hey, listen, it's almost eight o'clock. It's just about time to get started. I want to greet people. I want to hear from folks. Oh, I see the chat. Let me see what's going on in the chat here. Uh, the chat. Welcome from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Hey, William Collins. I saw you on uh, YouTube uh, this morning. Good to have you on the call. Uh, let me see. You got Ken and Caitlin from New York or New Jersey. I love this song. I've played it often. Yeah, man. You should know you are a rocker and a good, good player. Um, let me see. What else we got going on here? Lanny Richardson. Thank you, Lanny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Amen for that. You know, oh, yes. James from uh, Colorado Springs. Good to have you on the call. Um, hey, William. Melissa from uh, MN, Minneapolis. I got Lauren here. <clears throat> Excited to be here from Ackworth, Georgia. Who else is on the call? Who else we got? We got, uh, let's see, we got Gil from Cambridge, United Kingdom. Hey, Gil, you're up a little late tonight, buddy. I don't know. It's probably one o'clock in the morning there. Good to have you on the call. We got Evelyn. Hey, Evelyn, my goodness, from Alberta. And of course, I got Addie from Texas. Hey, Addie. Uh, good to have you on the call. Um, hey, I see and hear you. Uh, no, I don't hear. Let's be asked if I can hear you. No, I will not be able to hear you. I'll be able to watch your comments in the chat. So that's where that is. And uh, let me see. Gary, greetings. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Been listening to a lot of Peter Daniels videos on his website. Pretty amazing. Yes, he is. Russell from North Illinois. Bill from Buffalo. We got people jumping on the call. Illinois. Uh, Kentucky, good to have you on. Oh, I see. Thank you, uh, Judy, for commenting there. Randy from Louisiana. <laughs> Louisiana. Sorry about that, Randy. Ready to go. Uh, we got Born Texas. God bless you. Got Tim P from LA. I don't know if that's, yeah, it is LA, Los Angeles. Wasn't sure if it was Louisiana or not. Kim, we got Kim. We got uh, Ferguson, Kentucky, New York City, uh, Brooklyn. Let me see. They're coming in fast. Maryland. Roland from Kelowna, British, I, Roland, 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 Kelowna, British Columbia, my favorite small to medium size in British Columbia. My son, his wife, and our, my six grandkids live in Kelowna. They absolutely do. Hey, Rick Osborne from British Columbia. Good to have you on the call. Matt Clyde from United Kingdom. Okay, New Market, Ontario. It's getting a lot. Getting a lot. Let me see what time is this. <clears throat> I can't greet everybody, but they're hopping on. Hello, Denise. Hello, James Treadway. Hello, everybody else. Shirley, and let me see who else. Gordon from upstate New York. <coughs> Age from Colorado. Uh, let me see. We got uh, who's from Toronto? Hazel, and my my grandmother's name was Hazel from Toronto. I remember that because in 1955, Hazel, we had Hurricane Hazel in Toronto. Not that I remember the hurricane, but I heard about it often enough. Brian from Mississippi. Brian, man, I'm glad you jumped on the call. Good to have you guys. Well, listen. Yeah, everybody's on the call. I'm glad to have you keep the comments in the chat going. I've asked Wally and my beautiful wife, Judy Ann, who's also uh, around here. She's in the other room, so she can monitor things as well. Uh, I'm just going to uh, get us started. Uh, listen, I, I love that worship music. I could play it all day. In fact, I play that just about every day. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm so grateful for the folks jumping on this call. I'm grateful for the work that you've done by your spirit in our hearts, in my heart, in the hearts of everybody on this call. If not just now, not just before now, but even during this call. And Lord, I commit this to you and I pray that somehow you will find a way through these earthen vessels to, to transport or to unload the deposit that you put in us and that you put specifically, as I'm trying to convey it, that you put specifically in Peter Daniels and you'll help me somehow through this imperfect being to get that message out and to, and to provide value and, 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 and uh, uplifting to everybody on this call. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen and amen. Well, okay, I'm going to I'm going to get us started here. I got, um, let me see here. I'm going to pop open something here. Um, let me get, let me, let me crack in. Okay. Oh, let me share my screen real quick. Let me see here. Share screen. I won't be able to watch comments at the same time, but we'll be going here. Share. And let me hit my other button. Okay, here we go. Now, other people are going to be jumping on, but I'm not going to be able to watch that while it's happening. So that's just going to be the way it is. Because um, I want to get this onto you and keep us on a reasonably good schedule tonight. Um, but I'm, I'm particularly excited about doing this uh, with Peter Daniels. Now, as you know, because of my emails, I made it very clear, he's not going to be on the call tonight. Um, he's one of the most incredible man. He's the most incredible man that I've ever met personally, ever known personally. 
Um, he, and his son, Graham, who I've, I've spoken with a number of times, is a testament to the kind of father that Peter Daniels has been and is. Um, so I'm grateful for that. And I just want to acknowledge before I go any further, um, both uh, Peter Daniels for agreeing to uh, do this interview. We actually, I asked him if he would be interested in doing a webinar. And uh, at first he was, yes, I can't, you know, I'd be interested. But then he was having some difficulties. Um, you'll see as he talks about it a little bit on the call, he's struggling with some health issues. So that was a bit of a challenge with Parkinson's and so forth. So, but I'm telling you, his mind is sharp. He knows stuff and he's on the ball and it was so awesome to have it. But we had to delay it and cancel it and start it and whatever. We had to work out a few things, uh, but we got it done. And with Graham's help, Graham, who uh, may or may not be joining us tonight, um, is was instrumental in also bringing this together. And we basically came up with a compromise. Let me let's do it at a time that is at an optimum moment for Peter Daniels, and we'll record it, and then I'll share it with you all later tonight. So that, or you know now, which is what we're doing. So that's how this kind of got started. <clears throat> um, but I want to tell you a little bit about Peter Daniels that you may or may not know. Um, this man here, he was a billionaire before it was cool to be a billionaire. I mean, now we got 2,600 billionaires, apparently. Last year was about 2,000. When he became a billionaire, it was a very, very, very small club. But that doesn't matter. I want you to understand something about his heart. He told me when he got born again, that he, one of the things that was just burned in his heart was he wanted to know how much a man could give away in his life. How much a man could give away. And he set out on a mission to do that. But as you know, and maybe some of, maybe not everybody knows, and he got born again at age 26. He was illiterate. He was a bricklayer, third generation welfare recipient. It was a pretty backward situation. He had a long way just to get up the level before he could go beyond that. But I asked him some questions. And, and one of the things he talked about was this. I'm going to play you a clip. It's about 50 second clip of an interview I did with him in 2014. And one thing he said, one little story he said, this is before we get to the interview we did the other day. Um, one thing he said is just haunted me. And I want to play it for you right now. And uh, let me make sure I got my sound up the way it needs to be. Hopefully that he gets it for us. Okay, here goes this. I remember one time I had an opportunity to give for evangelism. And I, I'm, I'm a very uh, confident giver. I believe that uh, Luke 638, given and shall be given unto you, would mean it pressed out, shaken together. As you give out to others, so it will be given unto you. And remember, of course, that uh, that talks about overflowing, which means there's going to be a little bit of wastage. But I, I saw a chance for evangelism and I gave every dollar I had. Then I thought, well, I wonder how serious I am about this. So then I borrowed on my real estate and I gave all that away. And uh, then I went to the bank and I thought, uh, let's see how, how, how much courage I've got. So I borrowed on my reputation and gave that away. I didn't tell my wife for 20 years. I made it all back. Now, I don't know what that does for you. Well, what it did for me was, I don't know too many people who would do that. And one of the dots I connected was when he did that, he was a wealthy man, a millionaire, multimillionaire, whatever. But it was not until after that, that he became a billionaire. Just, I made that connection. Peter Daniels is not the guy that is, he's not the guy that says, I put a dollar into the, the um, vending machine in the sky and I kick it till I get a hundred dollars out. That's not the man at all. He just wanted to give as much as he could possibly give. And so I asked him, I said, you've mentioned you have a giving program. W what exactly is that? See, I wanted to give you a little bit of an insight because what I'm about to share with you now came about after the interview that you're about to see, which was just a few weeks ago. And it was in some correspondence that he and I had back and forth. And he shared with me uh, some things in which, you know, his giving program, the way it works. Because I thought, okay, you got a giving program. You know, remember Letourneau uh, gave, he was a, a big giver uh, many decades ago. And um, it, it was said that he gave 10% and then he got up to 15, 20, 30, 40. Eventually he was living off the 10 and giving away the 90. So I thought, well, I wonder if 
that's what Peter Daniels means by a giving program, but it was not. So what I'm going to share with you right now is just to give you an idea of the man, because listen, this is important. People think, and it's wrong to just to just make an assumption about somebody. People think, oh, he's rich or he's wealthy. He must be arrogant. He must be selfish. He must be greedy. He must walk on people or whatever. Not the case. So I wanted to share a little bit about his heart with you because I was deeply impressed by it. So I asked him to share a little bit about his giving program. And it was over a period of three emails. I made a good number of notes and I, there's 12 things that he did. Now, <clears throat> I don't know too many people who, who deliberately plan out a dozen different ways to give, but he did. And the first one, of course, is tithing. You know what tithing is. We know it is. This is not a teaching on tithing, but tithing was one thing. The second thing was first fruits. I said, okay, wh wh what do you mean by first fruits? So he emailed me back and he explained that he said, you know, when we would maybe do a product or we have something go out, a new product or a release of some sort, and it went over really well, um, we would give the first fruit of that to the Lord, whatever that was. I said, okay, that's interesting. So you had a successful launch. Let's give the first fruits to God. The next thing was, as an example, evangelism. You know, he got born again on May 25th, 1959 in a Billy Graham crusade in Australia. And he went to that thing, you know, when he got born again, it's a wonderful experience. He walked in a pauper, he came out knowing he was the son of a king and his life was radically transformed. And years later, when he had some real money, as he likes to put it that way, he decided to bring Billy Graham back and he personally underwrote what became the largest Billy Graham crusade in the history of Australia on his own nickel. I, have, I don't know if you have any idea what that cost to underwrite a crusade that big but it's massive and he underwrote that. So that's, in the, that's a third way was supporting evangelism. A fourth way was he would support or fund uh, Bible schools. Uh, a fifth way, this was a big one too. And he explained to me, the last email was just the other day. He said, um, what I'm gonna be sharing with you at the end of the evening, at the end of our call together is how he distilled all his knowledge into a program, right? Well, he traveled the world with his team, however many he needed. He went to over a thousand churches, spoke to about a million people in 30 odd countries and never took a penny, not for airfare, not for hotel, not an honorarium. He underwrote it entirely himself, refused to take a penny from anybody in the church. He estimates that it would cost about $20 million to do what he did, $20 million. That was one of the ways he gave. Another one was, he would address social ills. You're going to hear about it in the interview. He talks about a, a, a nude review that came to Adelaide and, and how he dealt with that. So I won't get into it now. Another thing is he'd serve on ministry boards, which he also talks about Youth for Christ, uh, Our Power, Robert Schuller, uh, the Haggai Institute of Leadership, things like that. And, you know, when you serve on an international board of an international ministry, you got to be at the board meeting. So he's in Australia. So it's not exactly convenient, but that was another way he gave. Uh, but then he shared something that, you don't hear too often. And it really impacted me. He said, and yeah, I heard his voice. I wish you could have heard it. He said, I gave to my family. I love my family. I gave to my wife, my kids. I, I give to my family. He said, I give, I bless my church. I, I, I bless my pastor. He said, I, I've literally given to thousands of organizations. And here's the one that'll, that might me surprise you. The last one that he mentioned on his giving program was on occasion, he would give to himself. He'd give to himself. Now, I know a lot of people, that's where they start. They don't, ever, they don't ever get past that. But that was on his list as well. So I just thought it was real interesting to, to understand his heart. So I wanted to, to uh, share that with you a little bit. And now I'm going to, let me see here, escape this. I'm going to go straight over to the interview that I did and uh it's ready to play so i'm just going to push play this is about a 45 minute interview uh i'm going to play it uninterrupted uh we've put some closed captioning to help because there was a little bit of uh some of the sound wasn't exactly clear it was an international call and and sometimes it got a little bit um squiggly the sound is so we've got the closed captioning there to help as well so here goes without any further ado the interview that was just done recently with myself and peter daniels mr daniels you have your you look terrific. You look terrific. Well, thank you. It is an, an honor to be <clears throat> with you 
on this call. Thank you so very much for doing that and for being available for this call. And I won't uh, take much time to delay, but I did want to ask you off the record, just how are you doing? How are you holding up with the Parkinson's and so forth? How is that going for you? Well, it's a battle every day. And uh, I've had it 10 years and uh, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Um, my wife and I were talking about you yes. last night and we're um, saying we're going to keep you in prayer. And uh, it, may, it may sound odd to you because we've never met in person, but if it's possible to develop an affection and a love for somebody you've never met, we've done that. So we care about you deeply and, and, and are rooting for you and pulling for you because I know you're, you're, you fight the good fight every day of your life. Well, so thank you. Let's get on with that. Okay, so here's a, here's a, here's a question. Uh, you, you, you mentioned a couple of questions at the beginning that I might suggest that, that you might suggest to me. So for our audience, they may not know your history, but you have an incredible story coming up from nothing, maybe less than nothing, to uh, from being illiterate to having three doctorates, from being unknown Five to doctorates. having multiple ambassadorships, from nobody wanting your advice to kings and presidents seeking your counsel, world leaders and church leaders and all that happening, you've impacted the world with your life. Tell us a little bit about your, your schooling and background. How did that happen? Well, I came from a family of uh, four generations of welfare. And uh, <clears throat> it was very difficult at school. I... Uh, I could not understand. They thought I had brain damage. And uh, I had a teacher called Miss Phillips. And she used to punch me and kick me and try to get some sense out of me. And I just couldn't understand. And uh, our family uh, was very, very backward. My mother married my father and then she divorced him and married his brother. And then uh, she had two other uh, marriages and uh, I was brought up in a welfare system and uh, <clears throat> but I was a worker mm -hmm. uh, I, I worked even uh, as a young boy to get uh, to get money just to go to see the films and uh, it was very difficult very difficult well when you left school when you finally finished school and you said you've had enough of school <laughs> Uh, how old were you and what kind of work did you do? Well, I left school on my 14th birthday, which you could do, and uh, I did labouring work. I worked in factories uh, and finally I became a bricklayer because I was labouring for the bricklayers and when I caught up, I uh, picked up a trowel and started to lay bricks. And of course, this was the end of World War II and housing was very scarce and uh, finally I became a bricklayer mm. and uh, that went on and uh, until uh, we came to Christ. Well I want to ask you about that you married your teenage sweetheart when you were I think 21 years of age neither one of yeah. you were Christians how did that happen what what's your story and how you came to Christ? Well <clears throat> someone knocked on the door one day and uh, uh, asked us to accept tickets to go to the Billy Graham crusade. And I didn't like him. And I said, well, I'm not going. But finally, we did. And Rubina uh, coaxed me to go. And uh, that was when we came to Christ. And some of my friends said uh, he walked in one person and marched out an entirely different person. And we, we just couldn't understand it. And uh, <clears throat> One day, uh, I was building a chimney and a man came on the job and uh, said, hey, Daniels, I want to talk to you. Come down. So I climbed down and uh, he said he had a new position as a sales manager for a building company. And uh, would I like a job selling? I said, how do you sell? What, what do I do? He said, well, you'll, you'll have to get a better car. I said, I can't afford that. He said, but you get a car allowance. I said, what is that? And uh, I said, I don't know how to sell. He said, I'll teach you. And to cut a long story short, 
uh, I was a working machine. I work hard, very, very hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, within 12 months, uh, they fired the uh, sales manager and two of the other salesmen because I was bringing in more business than all of them put together. Wow. And I couldn't even get the orders out. I had to get the clients to write out the orders. And uh, I sold so much paint. I, I won a trophy for selling more paint than anyone else in Australia. And I'm colorblind. You're colorblind, and, and at that point, you're literate. Is that right? You, you, you couldn't. You weren't. I couldn't literate. write out the orders, and I'm colorblind. Wow. <laughs> so uh, that that was uh, quite a surprise to everyone. I bet. And and then I was uh, got a job with uh, another company for a lot more money. And uh, that was selling a hardboard, like a particle board. And uh, somehow, because I worked so hard, I didn't have any knock-off times or staying times, um, I topped the sales chart. And by then, I'm reading biographies and I'm, my mind is changing, I'm studying. And... Uh, <clears throat> They gave me a super genius award. And uh, I learned marketing. And uh, one day they came to me and they said, look, we, are, uh, we have to take you off, off selling. I said, what's the matter? They said, well, you're winning the trophy for the whole of Australia every month. They think it's a setup. I said, so we're going to take you off and you can work maybe three or four days at the end of the month and get a few sales in. And, uh, and we're going to give you a rise. I said, how much? Well, they told me and they said, you mustn't tell the other salesman. I said, well, I'm just as ashamed about it as you are. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> but that was a simple thing to do because I uh, worked out an idea for a board that they couldn't sell and it was in a storehouse for years. And I found a key and got into the storehouse and, uh, at the end of the month, I was allowed four days to sell. Well, the board that they couldn't sell for years, I sold, sold it all out and put the mills on the 24-hour shift uh, to catch up with the orders. And uh, they gave me another reward, and uh, I went as far as I could go there. And someone asked me to, uh, uh, to come and sell for them and double my salary. And still, I'm just trying hard. And the worst thing I did then was to go into business by myself. That was the biggest mistake I ever made. And I went broke three times over a uh, seven year period and uh, finished up uh, very badly in debt with credit cards and everything. And we had a creditors meeting and I went to the creditors meeting and uh, told them I'd pay them back. And they trusted me. And they said, look, you've never told us a lie. Uh, we'll, we'll trust you. So I went broke three times. But I have to ask you, how important was your career, your uh, track record in sales, your, your, your professional development as a salesman, how important was that to your success later in life? Oh, very important because <clears throat> it got all the rubbish out of my thinking. Uh, I, my wife said to me one time when I went into business and failed three times, it wasn't because I couldn't get the business, but I didn't understand economics. Mm. And at the end of that, I think it was uh, about a 12 year period. Uh, I uh, I started to learn economics. I went to uh, uh, work and help a man, an elderly man that understood money. Um, and uh, I doubled his uh, business and probably tripled it. And uh, then I went into uh, real estate on my own. But it took me 12 years. 
okay. and uh, failing all the time. And my wife said, Peter, maybe you should get a job and work for someone and not go into business again. I said, no, God is teaching me and he knows what a stubborn ass I am. <laughs> Did you have somebody to help you, a mentor, a teacher, teacher, somebody that could help you and give you guidance along the way, Peter? No, I didn't have a mentor, but I had a man who was a doctor and he was my surrogate father. And uh, every Saturday morning for 14 years on our knees, he taught me the uh, Bible. And uh, he, he was a wonderful man. I remember one time a, uh, <clears throat> there were other gentlemen in this meeting on Saturday mornings. And they, uh, <clears throat> one young man said, look, Peter Daniels, he's a nuisance. He asked so many questions. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind at the end of this meeting. And this dear doctor said, oh, I'd be pleased if you didn't do that, Brenton. He said, God has his hand on this young man. And that man, 12 years later, came to me to do the biggest job in his career. And uh, of course, I gave it to him. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, let me say, you know, <clears throat> over these years, you had business losses several times. Then you were finally successful over another dozen years. But after that, I'm sure you've had some serious challenges. What keeps you going? What kept you going through all that? Well, after I came to Christ, I wanted to see how much someone could give away in their lifetime. And uh, <clears throat> I had a sense of destiny. I would never stop. I never let up, stop. I, I, I just kept going. And uh, <clears throat> when I started to get real money, then I started sponsoring Bible colleges. Uh, and there was one thing that really set me off. Uh, every, I would always be on time for appointments. But uh, there was a new stage review in our city, and uh, that was... Uh, going to be displayed on the, on a play. And it was pornography against women. And I, I reacted against it. And uh, there was a group of people who were going to take it to court. And I thought, well, I'll go and see if I can help them. Well, I couldn't get a parking spot. <clears throat> so finally when I got a parking spot. I walked into the meeting and they were trying to get someone to handle public relations. And I only knew two people that were there. And one stood up and he said, Peter Daniels has come in. I, I vote him in. And another man stood up, he said, I second that. And suddenly I was on television doing debates and finally went to court and we had that uh, uh, ban. And so I did some things that were, that were a bit different. Sure. And uh, I was asked on television so many times in our city to break up strikes, all sorts of things that I did that were very, very, very different. And I just followed my money. One of the uh, things that happened was a young man came into my office mm -hmm. and uh, he, uh, he started to weep. I said, what's the matter, son? He said, well, I'm in charge of Youth for Christ in the city. I said, well, what's the matter with that? He said, I haven't been paid for two months and my wife has a baby. And I wrote out a check for him for $1,000, which was a lot of money then. And I gave it to him and I said, here, see if this will help you. I said, have you got a board of directors? He said, yes. I said, well, what are they saying about it? He said, they said they'd pray about it. I said, go and fire them. He said, I can't find my board of directors. I said, well, give me back that check. Finally, he fired them, and uh, I became, uh, over a series of events, the world treasurer for 114 countries for Youth for Christ. Wow. And uh, then I was work helping with the Gary Institute of Advanced Leadership Training, where we trained the chief of Interpol, uh, nuclear scientist and uh, in leadership. And uh, so I followed my money and I came on the international board. And uh, <clears throat> then uh, 
I thought, we've never thanked the Americans for saving our nation during the war. And I tried to get some of our men to go over and just thank the Americans and I couldn't get them to do it. So I went over. And by this time I was doing very, very well economically. I was buying up streets of houses. And uh, if you came into our city and asked who should you, you see to buy real estate, even the police would say, see Peter to Daniels. And uh, so we had a very good name. We didn't even work on Sundays in real estate. And uh, it, was a, it was a big deal. And then when I went to America and for the first time, my hero was W. Clement Stone. Mm -hmm. And he asked to meet me. How about that? Ross Perot asked to meet me. Uh, we had uh, the man that uh, did the uh, Back to the Future, the car, John DeLorean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it has to meet me. And uh, it just kept going. Uh, Chuck Colson, yep. Nixon's hatchet, it has to meet me. And uh, it, it it just didn't stop. And uh, Bob Schuller uh, was in trouble. And uh, I got him out of trouble in Australia because they... Uh, they weren't paying their bills and I got on television and, and raised the money and Bob Schuller was very, well, quite anxious about it. He, he, he said, they can't do that. And uh, they said, well, Dr. Schuller, uh, they sent us a check for a quarter of a million. He said, let me see that check. And then he called me. No, he, his offsider called me and he said, uh, Dr. Schuller wants to uh, thank you. I said, well, why isn't he calling? He said, well, he's busy, so I know. And he, he rang back, he said, oh, I think uh, uh, the phone was, uh, we had a bad line. I said, no, I hung up on you. I said, if Bob Schiller wants to thank me, tell him to bring me himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, slam the receiver down and Bob Schiller called back and asked me to go on the international board and I raised all the money for the East Balcony. Uh, wow. and, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, that that's that's just how it went. Well, you know, it, it could not stop. Finally, uh, I um, decided to teach churches business, and free of charge. I paid all my own expenses; would not let them give me an honorarium, and uh, went to a thousand churches in thirty countries, and taught uh, somewhere near a million people uh how to do business wow and it's been suggested that uh, it created more millionaires in the christian church than anything in history now that's that's a very big claim that is amazing and what i noticed about what you've shared in the story that i didn't know i didn't put it together like this was that not only were you successful which was that's a singular accomplishment by itself and then not only did you take your funds and give uh, millions of it away, but you did something else that probably had a bigger impact. You used your influence and the God-given wisdom to help ministries and other organizations solve problems, whether it was a ministry or whether it was the local police sorting out strikes or or international ministries like Our Power with, with Dr. Robert Schuller or Youth for Christ or whatever it is. So you use your, your time, which is, an, is the one thing that you can't replace. You can replace your money, but your time is gone. And you use that. And that's a very rare thing. So you use all three things. You, you, you used <clears throat> your, your knowledge. You were successful in business. You gave money. And you used your, your abilities on a big scale to change the culture, to get a nude review kicked out of Australia, to, to take up the cause for women, to do all these kinds of things all along the way so that literally people of fame and fortune all, all over the world were calling on you. Well, that's how it seemed to be uh, because I had developed a method and uh, developed uh, formulas for success. And one of them was, of course, the... Uh, program I did on goal setting 
Uh, my book on goal setting is the uh, probably the top book in the world on that subject. And, it's the gold uh, standard for goal setting. Yes, it is. It and really it's because is. You don't have any fluff. I've read your books, not all of them, but I've read a bunch. You don't have any fluff. There's no BS. You're just you're very pragmatic and very direct, and you and and there's no ethereal stuff. It's very practical, very usable, and very transformative. Is that a fair assessment? Oh, thank you. It uh, it's all fresh. It was all new. You see, because nobody taught me, and I had to work out the things that that actually brought in funds, and. Uh, 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 I, I had large numbers of people come, even uh, in the commercial world. I think one time we had 30,000 people at one of the lectures I gave. Wow. In Russia, I was getting thousands of people in Russia. Even today, people from Russia will fly into our city just to spend time and be counsel on business. And they fly all the way from Russia. You're like a modern day Solomon. It, you know, they said that there came from all the kings of the earth. They sent their men to hear the wisdom of Solomon. They came to hear that. And they said that Solomon spoke about trees and he spoke about animals. He spoke about all kinds of things. And they said they came from all over the world to hear his wisdom. You're, you're a modern day Solomon who did not have a noble upbringing, but you had a noble adoption. The father, you know, you were adopted by by God, the father, into the family of God, and boom, you, you took the time to get into that. How important was this time that you spent studying the Bible in the Word of God? Because there are a lot of Christian business people that the Bible is somewhere on a shelf someplace. But it seems to me, if I understand your, your story correctly, it would play a more central role in your life. Is that true? Well, I asked a difficult question. Uh, for instance, I, people think that Jesus was poor. I hired people to investigate what value was the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And uh, that's in our pro destiny program. We share that. And uh, I asked the very difficult questions, and if there was not an answer, I searched for the answer. Mm. It was important for me to um, put the right message out there because there's so many people that say, uh, well, I'm not built for this, but uh, I'll look for someone to finance it. Well, let us be the financers. Let us get it done. Mm -hmm. And so many people, uh, uh, are fri they're frightened. Uh, they should be full of faith, not full of fear, and uh, go out and get the job done. You've put together this program here, Destiny of the Third Millennium, and I have I bought this from you a few years back. I've got all the, the materials, the books inside it, the workbooks, the courses, and the first question I want to ask you is why did you put that together? You didn't do it because you're thinking of some creative way to make a few extra bucks. It was important to help people get their act together. So many Christians say they want to do something, but they're full of fear. They don't know which way to go. Mm -hmm. And this is a step-by-step -step story and, and with things to do to make them a better person and help them to supply the funds to get the job done. See, people ought to go and look at our, one of our websites, www.danlch, and they will find some material there to help them. But I would uh, recommend, and thousands of them have been sold, uh, to get that program, Destiny of the Third Millennium, and that will change their life. I get emails almost daily from people around the world saying how it's changed their lives and put their families together and they've been able to finance some of the work of God in all around the world. 
So well, I would encourage them to do something about it and get it. I, I think they should, of course. And now you have it digitally available and that's wonderful. But the reason you put this together was to get, as I understand it, you were sort of taking everything that you've learned from decades of business and walking with the Lord and put it into a training program, not because you were trying to figure out how you could have another business, but because you felt that you wanted to leave something for your children and your grandchildren and for anybody else. Is that is that the right idea? Well, uh, I don't want to put words into your mouth, but really that's how it happened. I had to put it down in form that people would understand and go in a step-by-step Look, maybe I might explain it another way. One of my heroes is Winston Churchill. Okay. And uh, there's a story when he was 10 years of age, he and another boy called Evan were running around in the woods playing. They stopped for a while, sat on a log, and Evan scratched the earth and a worm came up. And he said to Winston, he said, you know, when he... I believe in the sight of God and the rule of worms. Winston Churchill, at 10 years of age, turned to him and he said, that might be all right for you, Evans, but I'm a glow worm. <laughs> and at ten, and 10 years of age, he said, sometime in the future, the British Empire will be in great peril and it will fall to me to save the empire. At 10 years of age. Wow. When I found that, I chased up everything I could find about Churchill and I found a letter that he wrote to his mother when he was in his early 20s fighting a war. And he was out on military exercise on horseback and he wrote to his mother. He said, we were out on military exercise on horseback today and we are ambushed by the enemy. Many of my comrades fled in terror. He said, but I turned my pony around and I rode it straight into the face of the enemy. I took out my revolver and dispatched two on the left and two on the right. I was as cool then as I am now writing this letter to you. Nary a bullet touched my pony, my tunic, or my person. I was preserved. Mm. The higher things. Wow. He had a sense of destiny. You talk about and destiny in the program. Well, a sense of destiny drove me on. You see, I can't take much credit for what took place because I had that sense of destiny. I could not stop. And it was like a film. Wherever I went, everything fell into place. It was quite amazing. When I was in Russia, you've probably seen the the film, Enemy at the Gates. Mm -hmm. And... uh, Uh, the governor of that area gave me personally the battle plan for how they beat the Nazis uh, at that time in Russia. And uh, the the things that happened were unbelievable. Uh, I met Adolf Hitler's private pilot and he told me, everything that went on in the bunker. Uh, So many things and so many happenings. It was so extravagant, so important. And uh, I just felt I was playing a part in a film because everything just kept going. That's something. Well, I've got a few questions about your program. And one of the things that I remember you saying And I'd love it if you could give a little detail to this, but you mentioned that you would set aside one day a week to think. And I thought, think? Would you brainstorm? Were you meditating? Were you daydreaming? What what does that mean to you when you set aside a day to think? Was it thinking about God? Was it about business? Was it about your family? Was it everything? What was that? I would go to the public library because nobody goes there. (laughs) <laughs> and it was quiet. And I would think of formulas. Um, uh, I'd think of a formula for uh, handling an idea, time management, um, decision making, uh, 
learning to uh, to uh, run a business uh, without thousands of people. But see, one time, let me give you a simple example. Okay. One time, they they paid me a million dollars just to chair the board meetings. Wow. I mean, uh, because I, I studied just about everything that was necessary for business and put it in formula form. See, I wrote that book uh, um, to the Christian Code of Conduct. Well, before you go out into business, you ought to write down what your code of conduct is and how much you're going to stress your willpower because willpower is the integrity of the soul. And I would just think about all those sort of things and do a franchise. Now, I would look at the anatomy of an a, a entrepreneur and uh, how to handle law and conflict. And I'd think about all those things and uh, write them down in a formula. Just in the, uh, just near the third millennium, putting the goal setting aside, there's over 30 formulas for business and they all work, all of them. That is that's absolutely both. huge. That is so huge because it, it takes it from the theory to here is a step-by-step -step formula that's proven because formulas do work and you and so you have these formulas 30 of them you say that are inside the program which i think is outstanding uh that you have done that so when you were thinking you were thinking what's a problem or what's something that needs to be figured out and then you go figure it out god would help you i believe in that and you would come back with wisdom and then you would put it to the test and it would work is that pretty much correct yeah well i would show them what the anatomy of an entrepreneur ought to be Mm -hmm. And I put a formula there. I put a formula down to handle a crisis. Uh, these 30 formulas, uh, uh, how to make a decision. People vacillate how to make a decision, but we found successful people make decisions quickly and change them rarely. And then successful people make decisions slowly and change them often. Wow. Oh, that's a very in keen insight of which there are, you have so many key insights in there. Uh, you know, th there's a lot, but one of the things in this program, you talk about six major topics. The first one is about the dream. What's the, the highlight of the dream? What are you communicating when you talk about the dream? Well, it depends. There are two ways. If you get a sense of destiny, then the dream captures you. And uh, that's the way I got things. Uh, I could not let up, give up or shut up until God take, takes me up. And even now today, I'm thinking of things that I could have done that I didn't do and uh, trying even now to put things into context. <laughs> so <clears throat> your dream, <clears throat> one of the key things was getting clarity on that. Is that correct? You wanted to get clarity, and you talked about how to get clarity on your dreams. It's much deeper than that, quite frankly. Okay. It, it just possesses you. Absolutely. It's difficult to explain, but uh, I did a, a study on a search for the reality of a personal sense of destiny. And uh, I think uh, it's a, you're creating a value higher than life itself. You imagine that which is bold and unattainable. You plan for that which is unpredictable and you seek a result that is difficult to change. They're not going to be able to change what I've done in around the world. It's just not possible. I mean, it's caught on fire and uh, people, uh, here we have thousands of people that have heard how to do it got the destiny program and I get letters from their wives. It's amazing that how their whole family has been changed and changed. So it's not about, <clears throat> it's not limited to making money. You actually transform people. This teaching transforms their mind, their inner person, and therefore their families and then their cities and then their regions and so forth. 
because of what you teach them. This is not just, here's a, here's a little scheme to make some money. This is far, far deeper than that. Oh, yes. Yeah. And you've got to leave the heritage for, the, for your family. I was going to say, what's the most important thing you want people to know about the second thing, which is the vision? Well, the vision is before you all the time. You can't get out of it. You can't get away from it. And, uh, and then we've got the tools to get the job done. See, with the goal setting program, you, you set your goal. You uh, uh, set out your strategy. You, uh, you plan out your problem. And you build in reserve. Now, this is something I'd like to talk about. Okay. Build in reserve because you're going to have problems. Have time reserves. Have financial reserves. Have friends reserves. I was in Russia one time um, with some uh, very famous theologians and we were having lunch. And they were talking about the wise virgins who trim their lamps. And they were getting all off. Uh, I, they weren't getting to the point. I said, look, uh, what you've got to understand is that story is for business people. They said, oh, come on. I said, this is what it says. If you've got reserves, you go to the party. We are debt free. We never have any debt. If you've got reserves, you go to the party. So when you've got reserves, Opportunities come along, you pick them up. Simple as that. Well, you know, you, you it's going to be hard to unpack for people what's inside this thing. They're going to have to unpack it themselves. It's, it's, and you've done something magnificent. It's now available online, uh, less expensive, more interactive. I love the program that you have now. Now that it's, it's now that it's online, but you talk about in there uh, commitment. Because people think sometimes, I'm just going to dream, or God's just going to put me there, or I'm just going to pray. And and I want to ask you about your prayer in a minute, but tell me about commitment. What's, that, what's the right role of that? That means you have to have a bit of pain. It's going to be painful. It's going to take years sometimes. Sometimes you fail, but you get up and go again. The commitment is always there. You must not stop. You just keep going. Some uh, people say, well, God has closed the door. God does not close the door. Kick it down. Uh -huh. Kick it down. Very good. Very good. So you you understand commitment because people, they, they get, the minute there's an obstacle, they well, God must not want this. They don't understand the enemy. They don't understand nature. They don't understand people. You talk about the power of commitment and the pain is a price you pay to get the gain. And if people aren't willing to make the commitment, they're not going to get the gain. Is that pretty much it? Well, pain is weakness escaping. Ah. Uh, when you endure the pain, just say, there's my weakness escaping. If you can capture that, even that will take you a long while. You know. And quite frankly, a, a lot of people are, are full of fear instead of full of faith. They want someone to do it for them. Grow up. Do it yourself. And you say that, and you, you've you done it. But at the same time, I've heard you talk about this, and if you can elaborate at all, if you want to, you've said at times, and I don't know whether it was a, a, a normal experience or on... Make your family Pharaoh. proud of you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, indeed. But on some occasions, you've told me that you've gone into your office and laid spread eagle on the floor before the Lord. What prompts that? What brought that on? Is it once a year or once a week? I mean, how often does that kind of thing happen? Well, the first time it happened was when I failed the last time. Uh, I stripped naked, flat on the floor, and said, Lord, I'm so low, low I can walk under uh, a snake's belly with an umbrella. That was the words I used. And I just stayed there. And... When it was finished, I knew the apprenticeship was over. And I said to my wife, I said, it's finished. The apprenticeship is over. Things are going to change from now on. She said, are you sure, Peter? Mm. I, she said, well, I, I wouldn't care if you were expensive the garbage, man. No, I said, things are going to change. 
and they changed from that to me. That day, I, I can't recall ever having another failure. That is so incredibly moving to me. And, and you had to have tied into that the fact that you knew that despite your failures, destiny was still on you, that God still had a call and a purpose on your life. Is that pretty much correct? Well, Albert Einstein said there are only two ways to live your life. One is so nothing is a miracle. And the other is, is everything's a miracle. Yeah. Did you spend one of the things I, I've never talked about that uh, I did, I used to take a group of young men and their wives with me when we did, uh, when I sat on a board of directors, uh, an international board, and let them see how we handled the world. See, because in the Haggai Institute, we were uh, training the chief of Envoy, nuclear physicists, major generals of armies. Uh, when, for instance, I'm in Africa, I get uh, uh, 14 armed guards with submachine guns. Uh, you've, uh, the things and places we've been uh, are alarming. Uh, but never be frightened. One of the things that God blessed me with is to overcome fear. And uh, what can they do to me? If they cut my legs off, I'm still Peter Daniels. If they kill me, I'm going to live forever. Uh, no. How can they hurt? Well, my, my last question for you, you've been so gracious with your time, and uh, is what would you estimate that you've invested in your own education after school is over, in your own learning discipline in terms of time and money what 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 kind of investment have you made in yourself along the way i almost ate books i have read so many biographies i've read so many uh, books and learned things that i thought incomprehensible and uh, that's why I, today i have five honorary doctorates the uh, universities asked me to come and teach. I'm looking at the wall there. There's uh, uh, one from uh, Trinity University and many universities around the world. And here I am. I never passed a grade at school. Yeah. That's so if you think you can or you can't, you're right. Well, then, as because you've been so gracious, I just want to say, as we close this out, you know, we're going to be sharing this with a lot of people. And you could pass on the most important piece of wisdom for life and, and for business that you could pass on to them. You got, you're talking to them. These are the last chance you're going to have to say these things to them. What would you say to them? Spend money on your brains. Spend money on your brains. I mean, because that is where your future is. Wow. You have to spend in your brain. Interesting. And you've read what? Christians I, won't do it. They expect God to do for them what they won't do for themselves. Right. Spend money on your brains. Wow. How many biographies have you read? Uh, it would be a few thousand. Several thousand. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, Mr. Daniels. Um, I don't want to cut this off, but I do want to respect your time. And I'll be sharing with the audience details on how they can get this program. I know that thousands of people, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, have been impacted by the teachings that are here, millions by some pieces of it as you've taught it around the world. But this is the chance that people are going to have to get it and go to school on your, this isn't some book written by somebody with theory or trying to make a buck selling books. This is something that is your life, the culmination of what you know, and you've put it down to usable practical formulas that anybody can use. And I'm so excited to be able to share that with people. And I'm honored to have you share this time with me. And I wanna thank you so very much, sir. Well, this will be probably the last interview I do. I'm nearly 90 and uh, the Parkinson's disease is getting in advance stage and uh, I would hope that they spend money on their brains, do something because the whole world is waiting for Christians 
to take up the charge and move on. God bless you. Thank you, sir. And with God's help, I'll do my best to encourage as many people as possible to follow your advice. Thank you for being on the program with me. And thank you to your incredible son, Graham, for his assistance in this matter as well. Uh, very much appreciate it to you. I salute you. Thank you. Thank God you. bless you. God bless you, sir. Bye-bye for now. Wow. <clears throat> I don't know what you all thought of that. I'm sure there'll be some comments going into the, uh, the chat box. But uh, before I go any further, I, I want to just uh, say something. Um, Peter Daniels and his son, Graham, they do have uh, a project they're working on in it's at danel.ch, D-A-N-E-L.ch. I showed that on the, uh, the webinar on the screen, but danel.ch, uh, it's uh, estate planning, it's strategic planning, it's financial planning. It's a big deal. People fly in from all over the world. So I recommend if you're interested in that thing, that kind of thing, check out their website, danelle.ch. Um, Graham is, um, they've just done some amazing things, which I can't get into in all this because I could talk for a very long time about it. But um, so I wanted to, to cover that. And also uh, I promised uh, Peter Daniels that I would share, and I'm gonna take probably five to 10 minutes and just give you a quick overview of, of what this program is. And the reason why it's gonna be very short is because it doesn't really need a lot of accolades. This is what the man did to become the man that he is. They have said about the program that it has no equal, that has been applauded uh, globally for its practicality and results in the fields of entrepreneurship, personal development and leadership. It's rather um, amazing. And so I'm gonna quickly show you something. This is about uh, 25 seconds, I think, 28 seconds. This is the, what you see on the video I'm about to play is the physical product. That is not what's being offered. What is being offered is the digital version of what you're gonna see. So just so there's no misunderstanding, we're talking about the digital versus the physical. I paid over $2,500 for the physical product. The digital product is a lot less, but here, so you can see what you're getting a digital copy of, watch this short little video. That'll give you an idea of, of the physical product that has been digitized. It has, as I mentioned, a couple of online videos. It's got six audio modules with a total of 43 different subjects or lessons inside it. And then there are uh, the student workbook, which was the big workbook, which has the formulas. Who does that? This is what he, when he takes a day a week to go someplace, he's coming up with formulas. The formulas are in there, uh, the worksheets uh, that are there. And I'm telling you, there are some of the most challenging questions. When you learn how to do a mission statement his way, when you learn how to do vision his way, when you learn how to do that, it, it, it pulls stuff out of your being like you did not even know was in there. Uh, it's amazing. Um, then there's the uh, Entrepreneurs and Leaders Handbook. Again, this is digital, um, but it, 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 it looks something like this. Um, there's uh, How to Build a Successful Life, and it's built on four things, character, ambition uh, or desire, if you will, relationships and economics, and then Jesus and wealth. And I got this book here. You're going to, it's, it's in the program digitally, but I got to tell you something. I read it again today just because I, I was just eager because you're going to learn stuff. I'm going to give you one example. I just got to tell you this. I don't know anybody who would say, well, maybe somebody would say, gee whiz, I wonder how much the, the frankincense, gold and myrrh would have cost the Three wise men, as people say, which wasn't three, but the Magi. I wonder what how expensive those gifts were. And usually on a Christmas card, you see this little box. They look like trinkets, like something you might put on a charm bracelet. So he, he wanted to know. So he hired theologians two years on the payroll. They went to Persia. They, they, went, they found these ancient Persian tablets. They did all kinds of research. He underwrote the whole thing and said, Whatever it is, it is. I just want to know. And it's all documented what they found. 
But one of the things they did, these magi, which were the equivalent of, of uh, members of parliament in the Persian government, that's who they were. And they came with their own army, if you will, of, of uh, people that could shoot the bow, essentially. And on the way to Jerusalem, you read about them coming to Jerusalem, by the way, in the Bible that's there. And on the way to Jerusalem, they defeated a legion of Roman soldiers, a legion of 6,000 soldiers on the way there. So these weren't three, you know, homeless guys with a couple of, of uh, treats, that, you know, little uh, trinkets they got out of a cereal box. This was serious stuff. And when they came to Jerusalem, the Bible says that the city shook. They were afraid because they were powerful and they just defeated a Roman legion. And Herod was scared spitless. And they asked him, you know, where is it? And he said, well, it's kind of that way we think. Let us, and he said, let me know what you find out. You might remember that. Let me know what you find out. And so, uh, of course, they didn't. They were warned to go a different way. But you'll be astounded what Graham and his father as they put this together, pull the information from the theologians that did the travel, it's in that book. This is one of the things that's in there that I found very, very impressive. And so lastly, because, because it's a digital product, I want you to see what the digital thing looks like. Um, when you get it and you log in, it'll be something like this. All right, I just want to give you a quick overview of what happens when you go online to see the program. There's a little highlight at the top that says my courses. You'll click on that. It'll take you to this page here. And there's your course content laid out right here. And so there'll be a welcome, there's introductory video, there's downloadable materials. And then there are the six major topics, for example, the dream. You'll hit expand, and there are the eight or so different uh, lessons that you'll see. And so I'll just pick the first one as an example to show you. When you open that up, there is, uh, in this case, there's an eight-minute audio, and the transcript is below it. And so each of them has a very similar format, and they'll all have the drop-down menus. Uh, you expand them on goals and so forth, and you'll... You'll pick open the the, uh, the option, and it'll take you to the, uh, the the short lesson and the audio. So that's how that works. That's what it looks like. Hope that helps. Okay. So basically, in in ten seconds, I'm going to give you some of the highlights of what you learn. Is time management, uh, economic security, goal setting, willpower, crisis management, directional thinking, how to lead. Ideas that make money, motivational permanence, decision making, how to create a heritage, how to handle stress, how to create and control a board of directors, how to build a mission statement that works, how to discover your sense of destiny, and obviously a whole lot more. And by the way, I'm sure there's some chat messages coming in. I'll, uh, if necessary, I'll respond to them when I'm finished. I'm almost done because the next thing people want to know is, well, how much is this? And I know I told you what I paid for it, but this is digital. It's a little different. So the investment which you can get anytime from, uh, you know, it, it's available after this for $850 anytime. But I was able to ask for and get a concession for a group discount for my subscribers. So everybody on my list gets a group discount of $100, meaning the reduced investment is $750. Plus, I was able to get one other thing and some bonuses. And I'm going to tell you what they are in just a second. But the discounted price and the bonus expire in five days. And the program we're talking about is the one I've just showed you, which has been said it created more millionaires in the Christian church than anything in history. But let me show you the bonuses. It's the Peter Daniels Library. Now, when I say the library, I'm referring to the books that he's written. I only showed nine. Uh, he's written more than that. This includes 11 books. He's written more than that. But just quickly, what they are is How to Reach Your Life Goals, the best book on goal setting anywhere ever in the world. And you must read it slowly. Christian Code of Conduct, you heard him talk about that. How to be happy, though rich. How to be motivated all the time. How to handle a major crisis. How about living on the edge or Miss Phillips, the teacher that said, you're a bad, bad boy and you're stupid and you'll never mount anything. His book is called Miss Phillips, You Were Wrong. <laughs> and it talks about how to handle rejection. The awesome power of public speaking or willpower, the integrity of the soul. Global survey into multi-level marketing how to create your own dynamic mission statement. Those books are included. They're not part of the regular program, but they agreed to throw that in with me as I made a request because we're gonna do a group, basically like a group purchase. So the program looks like this. It's the destiny of the, uh, of the millennium, 850 minus a discount, it's $750. You get both of those. Um, but what I wanna tell you is this, in all fairness, 
what I would expect from anybody else is I would expect to take the time to go through each of the, the major topics and break it down for you. But here's how I look at this. You just listen to that man. If you're not impressed, if that doesn't, if that doesn't blow you away, if if this transformation doesn't pique your interest, then it's definitely not for you. You see Peter Daniels on the left, the 26-year-old bricklayer. How that man became the man on the right, Peter Daniels, the billionaire Christian statesman. How that happened is what that program is all about. Now think about this, please. I don't know how many friends you have that are billionaires, but he's the only one I have. And of the billionaires I know of, he's the only one I know of that has no debt. He wasn't sitting around thinking, hey, maybe we can sell a few CDs and make a little extra money. This is not about that. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, you can go to sevensecretsofthesale.com forward slash PJD. I've asked Wally to please put the hot link in the chat box so people can click on that. Uh, if you if you go after for if you miss the link, it's seven secrets of the, of the sale dot com forward slash PJD and you can get it right now. Now I'm going to do one other thing real quick here. Uh, stop the share and uh, let me pull up something here. Escape that. Okay, um, I have a few, a few closing thoughts. I just want to lay my heart on the table with you guys. Peter Daniel said, the whole world is waiting for Christians to do something. To do something. To wake up and take charge and move on. We're into 2021. We're well into it. We're living in absolutely historic times. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to watch history from the sideline. I want in the game. I want on the field. I want to make a difference. I want to change history, even if it's just for my family. He said, I'm sick and tired of seeing Christians be broke, which is why he created this program. It wasn't to help his cash flow. It was to help yours and mine. It was to help ours. It was to help the body of Christ. It was for his family, his natural family first, his church family second, the body of Christ at large. And he put together this lifetime of learning. And I want to tell you something, because I've been through this. I'm going through it again. It is so stinking powerful, <coughs> so salient, so concise that you will have to, you know, it's like reading Proverbs. You read it, you read it, you have to read it over and over and over again. And you just expand, you get the meaning out of it. I, I'll give you, I've got a number of examples. I'll just give one that comes to mind. When, when I was talking to him one time, he talked about, he spends time thinking. So, you know, I asked him about that. I you saw that on the, on the interview. So I began to think about that and started to do what he said. And do you know what? I, I decided to tackle a problem. It was a kind of a theological problem I was trying to resolve in my mind that I've tried to resolve for decades. And every time I've gone after it, I haven't really found a suitable answer. So I thought, I'm going to follow this. And just today, I had a breakthrough. It felt like a theological breakthrough. Maybe it'd be like Martin Luther or something. It's going to shock the world. But it was a, I'm not going to hear to tell you about it because that's not the point of this. But it's like, wow, this thing about setting aside this time to actually think. And there's a way of thinking. Anyway, I learned about that. He inspired me about giving. My gosh, our giving has gone straight through the roof. I've learned something about giving. I heard the man say, and you heard him say, I am a confident giver. I thought, wow. I mean, I've been so moved by that formulas, the formulas that he talks about. And I see some people are ordering. Thank you for that. Go to seven six of the sale.com slash PJG PJD. Put the link in the, in the uh, chat box, please. Um, but yeah, anyway, I've got a lot of help from it personally. He said successful people make decisions quickly, which I can see people are doing that. Uh, and they change them rarely. That's pretty interesting. The way I look at it, this is your chance to effectively be coached by Peter Daniels because you can listen to this over and over again anytime you want. 
And you're never going to get another chance to essentially be mentored by another Peter Daniels because there'll never be another one. There is only one. This is it. Now, there were a year ago, there were about 2,000 billionaires on the planet, about 2,600 now, they say. He became one a, lot, a lot, you know, good while ago. But he's the only one I know that took the time to put it all down. Why? Because he's reaching back because he knew, dang, he was a bricklayer. He came from a horrible background with no prospects, never passed a single grade in school, nothing. And what he learned, and listen, I've, I've run into this before. He's getting to the end of the, the life. You know, he's, got, he's approaching that. He's old. He's almost, almost 90. He may have 10 more years. He may not. I don't know. Nobody knows, right? That's in God's hands. But I've seen this happen with very wealthy people. They get to a certain point, And then Peter's done this. Like, I got to get this out. Why? You know why it matters? Look at what the beginning of this whole thing was. At the beginning, I showed you how he gave and he gave and he gave and he gave a dozen different ways to Sunday. He gave. He is trying to equip you to prosper so that you can advance the gospel economically as well as every other way and trying to put those means in your hand. So that's um, what he's doing. You're never going to have another chance to do that. Now, I realize for some people, $750 is a sizable investment, but I want you to remember a couple things. If you remember his closing remarks, which they riveted me, because I didn't know what he was going to say. We didn't talk before the interview. I had no idea what his answers were going to be. And he said, uh, you know, what's the one thing you want to leave people with? And he said, you might remember, spend money on your brains. Why is that important? Because everything you do in life is decided on by your brain. Think of your brain as your operating system. And those decisions that you make are always and always will be limited by what you know by your, the size of your knowledge, if you will. So when you get this program, you're effectively, effectively upgrading your brain's operating system to a whole new level. Now listen, you'll spend money upgrading Microsoft Word or your Apple program, iOS, or you'll spend money upgrading you know, Word or whatever else it is. When's the last time you invested on your brain? I'm gonna tell you, this is what this is to me. And if you don't learn to think on a higher level, you're never going to rise to a higher level. That's just a fact. You're going to be the same person five years from now that you are today, except for the people that you allow to influence you and the education that you gain. And for me, there's nobody in the world that I know personally that I would want more to mentor or influence me than Peter Daniels and actually to educate me. So I wanted you to think about that. Now, getting to the end here, Solomon, he said, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Essentially, you know, you've heard it said, Laurel Hobbs couldn't be on the call tonight, but she's going to catch the replay. She'll hear this. Uh, you know, they, they say that you are what you eat. And then she'll say, no, you are what you absorb, what your body can absorb. Well, I'm going to say this. You are what you think. That's what Solomon's saying here. As a, as a man thinks, so is he. You are what you think. And <clears throat> you can only think about things that you know something about. So what you think on filters down into your heart. It goes from your brain into your heart, which is why the Bible says, guard your heart. For out of it flow the boundaries of life. They're set by what's in your heart. Therefore, it's very important what you let in. And if you want to enlarge your boundaries, you need to enlarge your heart, which is what happened to Solomon. First Kings 4.29. You'll read it for yourself. And if you want to enlarge your heart, you got to enlarge your thinking because this is the gatekeeper for your heart. In short, I, I say it this way. If you, if you think like Peter Daniels, you're going to, if you, if you, you need to do that if you want to have results like him. Now, you may want to have another mentor. That's fine. That's up to you. But I'm telling you, when he contacted me, and he just wanted to share this with my audience because he's been on here before, I thought, you know, I got to stop what I'm doing and make this happen because this is the best opportunity that I know of, the best program that I know of, the thing that's going to help more people and has already, and I wanted to share that with you guys. And then uh, two, two last things. Number one, remember this. Your money replenishes. In other words, think about this. Think about the time that you had um, a repair bill on your car it came at a time that, oh, what am I going to do? Well, you, you figured it out, right? Or, or an appliance blew, or you had to get a new this or that. 
And then, you know, the money replenishes. That's what it does. But time does not. You're going to always have more money, but you're never going to have more time. So my question to you is, if not now, when is it going to be for you? And I'm going to say this to you. In the next 12 months after you do get this, you will, you will have become a much closer version of the man or woman that you want to become if you apply what you learn. And when you look back over the year, you realize that it effectively cost you about $2 a day. So I would encourage you to do that. And lastly, I just want to say, we do have a 30 day happiness guarantee on anything we offer. So if you get it and you think, this is not what I thought it was. I thought it came with pizza. If you're not happy for any reason with your investment, even if it's day 29 at midnight, you can request a full refund and you'll get it. So what that does is it takes all the risk, it takes all the risk away. So that's what I wanted to share with you. I'm going to now take a look and see Wally. Um, I, I see a lot of things here. I don't know where to begin. I've, I've answered all the questions, so you can read the comments if you wish, but all okay. the questions have been answered. I see that the folks are ordering in. Did you put the link in there, Wally? Yep, you did. Okay, and it's yeah. separate tickets to the sale.com slash PJD. Uh, Tim P says, Michael, you know, I have the program. Thank you for following God's prompting and sharing the destiny program. I do. I was in tears by the end of this interview. Dr. Daniels is the real deal, as are you. Well, thank you so much, Tim. Dr. Daniels had indicated to me that this program is equivalent to a graduate level. He is absolutely correct. Bottom line, if you're a Christian business professional or anybody, really, you need this program. Thank you so much for that. You know, I, I get choked up when, when I go through this because I know what it is. But I also know, you know, some people, and, and I've got emails from some people, they were from Australia, for example, and they're saying, Peter Daniels, he's our guy. He's our, he's our boy. He's, he's our man. We love him. And, and, you know, and they're retired. But they just said, I just wanted to see this last interview. I just wanted to, to catch that. And so they want to make sure they got it. And so I realized not everybody should be doing this. But anybody who still says, I got time left in me, and I still got some fire in my belly, and I want to make what whatever time I have left count. Now, I'm going to say something to you. <laughs> I said to my wife today, I said, you know, when I'm 25 and I'm 30, you're looking ahead. You can't even see the end of the road. <laughs> then when I'm in my mid-60s, I think, wait a minute, it's right there. <laughs> I got a lot of road behind me. A lot of people are like that, but I'm going to tell you something. I got fire in my belly and a lot of you do too. It doesn't matter whether you're 40, 50, 60, or 70. It doesn't matter. Do you still have something you didn't do? You didn't finish. He said, listen to him. He's 89 about, uh, nearly 90 years old. He said, I still got things I want to do. They're working on a movie. Uh, they're, they're working on Danell, Danell, D-A- and el.ch they're working with uh, graham they're working on something together they're not like retiring he doesn't need to do anything he's got a beautiful 130 acre estate just outside the city of adelaide with horses they're on lake and it's gorgeous he got all that he doesn't have to do any of this he did it for you and i was so touched by it i wanted to do it for you as well so that's why i've taken a lot of time to put this together um to that now, Wally, have you caught? Is there any unanswered questions that I need to be able to answer? Because I appreciate you covering that, man. No, no just you got it all answered, I believe. Right. I hope folks are reading the comments. Uh, you know, they look good. And listen, let's let's do this. I don't know how many people are left in the call, but those of you who are left in the call, will you do one thing with me right now? I want to pray with you for Peter Daniels. His health isn't that great. Now, I thought he did fabulous in the interview, and I'm proud of him. But thats he's not as strong as he used to be. So let, let's just join me in a minute for prayer, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up my brother, my elder brother, the man who's got more impact in him, in, a, in between yawns. He can, he can release more wisdom than a, a, some people will do in five years. I pray, God, that you will re restore his strength. I ask you, Lord, to visit him. Give him one more push. Give him one more lap. Give him one more uh, a surge of years, Lord, to, to recover and find strength. Lord, <coughs> will you give him one more, one more run around the track, if you will? A good one. I mean, a healthy one.
Help him, Lord. And bless his family and Rabina, his wife and his kids, and for Graham, who I know somewhat, and bless them and their business and their life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, gosh. Oh, I'm a little overwhelmed by that. Let me see. Um, so you're watching all this. Um, oh, what is the website for the digital version of the third millennium course? William Higgs. Uh, the answer is that is you go to seven secrets of the sale.com slash PJD. Please put the link in again, Wally, just or if you haven't, uh, you know, do that. So, uh, William, catch that. Uh, the link should be in the chat, but if you forget, it's seven secrets of the sale.com slash PJD. I'll actually send out an email for folks that may have missed it. I see Denise is on the call. Denise, God bless you. Denise has her hand up. Wait a minute. How do I, can you see the question, Wally? <laughs> uh, I asked her that before. I think it was accidental. There was a couple hands up. Okay. So you've, you've, James Treadway and so on. You got that, you got that covered? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's so much here. Guys, I want to thank you for being on the call with me, everybody. Wally, I want to thank you for helping me out. Sweetheart, I know you're on the call too. I want to thank you for being on it with me. Um, Careful to use my name and sweetheart at the same time. I yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Wally, thank you for being on the, on the call with me, comma, sweetheart. <laughs> my Judy Ann, my beautiful, precious bride, who is such an amazing partner for me. But I want to thank you guys who got on the call tonight. You didn't know what you were getting into. I knew because I know the man and I can't, it's hard for me to, how did I get into his life? Well, my friend Tim Porter introduced me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim, uh, back six, seven years ago. But can you imagine a man being gracious? I'm nobody to him. And he makes the time. And he's given me hours and hours of his time just because that's who he is. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping Lauren Loper says hi to Judy. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, it was a pleasure. So guys, listen, uh, if there's, let me do this. If there's anybody has something that's unanswered because there's a lot of, of uh, you know, comments and chats. And I don't know if, if Wally and Judy saw it all. I know they certainly tried to. I know I didn't see any of it because um, I'm doing the other thing. Um, so let me see. Uh, this was amazing. So grateful. I can feel your passion, true urgency. Thank you, Lauren. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. There's only one physical copy left on the planet. And uh, I'll give this to, I'll, I'm going to trade this for somebody's house because <laughs> I'm not giving it away <laughs> anyways, but you can get the download and you can go online now. I see the orders are still coming in. So go ahead and do that. And bear in mind that the, the, uh, Daniel's organization agreed because I asked for it. I asked for for my for a, basically a group discount. If you're on my list, can I get a discount for them? Here's a hundred dollar discount, and we'll give you a library of his. I mean, phenomenal, 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 phenomenal books. So you won't see that anywhere else. This is your shot. This is your chance. Uh, I hope you can do it. I hope you will do it. I'm um, seeing if anybody else has any other questions. Judy Cardi, hey Gary, God bless you, Gary. God bless you, Judy. Danelle, uh, yeah, Danelle.ch is the uh, the the website for um, Graham and his father, Peter Daniels, um, and and the project they're doing. I mean, how many people do you know? How many families do you know have their own currency, mint their own gold coins, <laughs> mint their own silver? Have their own money. Check it out. I'm telling you, they just want to pass it on to you. So I hope I hope we've succeeded in getting that across to you guys. Um, I love you all. I, I I'm gonna let it go and say good night. And uh, thank you again, every one of you, from the bottom of my heart for being and sharing this moment with me. You'd have wanted to be on the call, but it didn't work out quite like that. So we did this. I hope it was a blessing to you. God bless. We'll be in touch.